welcome to ATB TV with our Origin series. And today we're going to be talking about the offset guitar. So it's the Jazzmaster, the Jaguar, the Bass 6 and the Electric 12 in particular. Uh, oh, and before I forget, uh, if you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell notification button uh, to make sure that you're up to date with all our latest stuff. Uh, be it demos, be it these things, uh, anything really. Um, so without further ado, let's get cracking. Uh, so what is an offset guitar? Well, traditionally, stringed instruments have been produced with a sort of symmetrical hourglass shape. Um, so this is your the sort of violins and cellos and violas, and also you know the guitar family. So from the lutes through, had always been produced with this sort of symmetrical shape, and it makes production easier. You know, you can create molds for to shape sides and things, which are much easier to produce. Uh, and this tradition had been carried through by those builders that had moved over from uh, Europe to America, sort of Martin and Gibson. Uh, and so this tradition was, was carried on in production in America. So by the, by the 50s, when you see the introduction of the, the popularity of the electric guitar become more apparent, you've still got the same shape the same traditional shape and even the Telecaster and the Stratocaster still essentially retain this same hourglass shape. So in the late 50s, so 1957, Fender is seen as this sort of, they're very popular in California, but they're seen as not quite so pro level on the East Coast, where you've got the popularity of the sort of the art shop manufacturers, the more traditional manufacturers. So Leo Fender decides that he wants to try and take these guys on and produce a more upmarket version of the guitars he's already. So using the same manufacturing techniques, but, but adding more features. This is where you get the, the offset design, purposely for you to use for sitting down to play. The original patent shows a drawing of a character sat down with a guitar in two different positions. One of them is sort of uh, a more classical position with the guitar more upright, and another is on the sort of opposite knee, which is sort of the position we sort of associate with more modern playing. So it was the first sort of um, ergonomically designed guitar. So, as I previously said, in 1957, Leo went to the drawing board with a view to making a more upmarket guitar to appeal to the more serious player. And the end result was the Jazzmaster that we've come to know and love. Uh, so he, you know, went and created some radical new electronics and also re redesigned the, the tremolo system. So moved away from the, the tremolo system he'd already designed for the Stratocaster and designed something completely new. Now with the electronics, Leo took inspiration from one of his employees, uh, a Mr. Forrest White, who started working for the company in 1954 and helped streamline their production. Um, but had also uh, come to Leo prior to that with a 10 string lap steel uh, of his own making that had a preset tone circuit. He'd seen uh, some musicians playing in the early 40s and seen how they struggled to change from a rhythm sound to a lead sound, and so had come up with his own ideas for a preset system to achieve this. So Leo had obviously taken this on board and had it in the back of his mind when he came up with the design for the Jazzmaster. So the way the rhythm circuit works is you have a separate volume control that will work exclusively on the neck pickup. Uh, these are of different value to the uh, lead circuit, so you end up with a different sound and you can then set these and leave them and then switch between it with a little switch. Another new innovation were the pickups. Constructed the same way as a Stratocaster pickup, they were merely wound 
thinner and wider to try and achieve a bigger sound that would rival that of an arch top. So thirdly, we have the tremolo system. So obviously he'd innovated with the uh, Stratocaster system, uh, whereas this one, he went for a different tact, more along the lines of a Bigsby design with a separate uh, bridge and tailpiece. Unlike the Stratocaster system where the uh, springs are under tension, the single spring here is under compression. So another development of the Stratocaster tremolo is the locking mechanism, whereby you can lock the trem arm in position and so if you break a string and it'll stay in tune, unlike on a Stratocaster when if you break one string you have to then rebalance the whole system to keep it in tune. Okay, so the Jaguar was introduced in 1962 as the top of the line model. Uh, it comes with the, some new pickups, uh, some additional wiring options and a shorter scale. So whereas the Jazzmaster has a 25 and a half inch scale, which is standard Fender scale. The Jaguar has a 24 inch scale, which is actually shorter than a Gibson scale. But Fender claimed in the catalog, that this was a faster and more comfortable playing instrument. Sharing many features with the Jazzmaster, the body shape, most of the electronics and the trim system. Uh, the Jaguar now featured um, some additional chrome parts and a new switching system for the pickups as well as uh, new pickups. So the first thing you notice about a Jaguar is the pickups. So they're single coil pickups in the sort of uh, the narrower format. Um, they're wound slightly hotter than Stratocaster pickups although they're produced the same way. The also the addition of the metal claw, which uh, its purpose was twofold. It was there to reduce hum and also to focus the magnetic field. The final new addition to the Jaguar design was the pickup selection on the lead circuit. Now the rhythm circuit remains the same, but instead of having a three-way selector switch, you have uh, individual switches for each pickup, which work as an on-off, and a third switch, which puts a capacitor in line uh, as a high pass filter um, and that's referred to as the strangle switch. So in addition to using the tremolo and the bridge from the Jazzmaster, Leo also introduced the now infamous mute system to the Jaguar design. As the guitar was shipped with a cover over the bridge which is a standard feature on all fenders, um, you couldn't easily mute the strings over the, the, the saddles. So Leo designed the mute so that you could easily flip from muted to unmuted sound by just moving the, the tray under the strings. Uh, though undoubtedly a clever solution to the problem, it proved troublesome as it could cause intonation issues and as such uh, never really caught on. So one of the other offerings from the Fender catalog at the time has to be the Bass 6. It's introduced in 1961. And in essence, it's a long scale guitar tuned down an octave. The design came about uh, due to the popularity of what's referred to as the tic-tac bass uh, on recordings of the period. This is where uh, two bass parts are recorded, one on an upright bass and a second on a, a six string bass like, such as the bass six that provides a sort of more percussive sound behind the upright bass sound. On that initial release in 1961, the bass featured three specially made pickups with chrome surrounds and three on-off switches on a chrome plate, uh, which obviously inspired the Jaguar that came out the following year. And then in late 62, the design was modified to incorporate features from the Jaguar. So you had the mute was added. They added the strangle switch, so you end up with four switches on the plate. And also they incorporated the Jaguar pickups into the design. So custom curls have been a feature of Fender guitars from the very beginning, but it's with the introduction of the offset that you really, they really become a feature. As you can see behind me, I have uh, uh, three guitars in uh, custom colors. You have the Jaguar there in the fire mist gold, the electric 12 is in the black, and the bass six, which is in the uh, quite a famous Fiesta red color. In late 1962, uh, matching headstocks start to appear on all custom color offset guitars, uh, as you can see behind me. 
Around the same time, they also introduced the white pickguard on all custom colors, apart from Olympic white that still had the tortoiseshell pickguard. So the Electric 12 was introduced in 1965 and was the last uh, guitar that Leo designed for the company. So he designed the guitar completely from the ground up, uh, utilizing the offset shape. He designed a whole new bridge that had 12 individual saddles that were adjustable for intonation and height. So you could optimize uh, where each string was and how it, how it stayed in tune, which was a feature that was not common on uh, 12 string guitars of the time. Also new to this guitar were the pickups. You have uh, a pair of split coil pickups, uh, which are wired to a, a four position switch that give you access to all the usual positions, uh, plus an out of phase option. On top of this, you have a neck that's very playable, which is odd for a 12 string at the time, and a hockey stick headstock, an iconic thing in itself. So they have it, the origins of the offset guitar. Now it has to be said, although uh, Leo did intend for the, for the jazz master in particular to end up in the hands of jazz players, he didn't necessarily succeed. Although there is footage of uh, Joe Pass playing a Jaguar, uh, as well as some photographs of him as well. So he, he did, you know, did succeed somewhat, but to be fair, it's it become an instrument that's uh, sort of intrinsically connected to uh, alternative music and seen in the hands of players, you know, the, the Sonic Youth are famous for using them, uh, as is John Frusciante, the 1975, uh, you know, the list is endless. Uh, Luther Perkins, obviously. Um, but it's become such a part of the uh, musical instrument landscape, especially of sort of the 21st century. Uh, so many builders are building offset-inspired instruments that pay homage to not only the uh, the Jaguar and the Jazzmaster, but also maybe the, the ones that deserve honorable mention, such as the Marauder and the Maverick, and uh, to the, the Starcaster, which although it's not a solid body guitar, the, does hold, you know, a lot of its design features are offset in origin. Uh, so yeah, so there you have it. Hopefully this helped clear up a few things. Uh, make sure that you subscribe so you can keep up to date with anything we're doing. Uh, and uh, yeah, come and see us again. This has been ATB TV. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.